What's going on everyone? My name is Hayden Davidson. Now in this video, I'm gonna run over what 17 months of selling on Amazon, doing Amazon FBA has taught me. Um, so what I'm gonna run into is literally what I do, okay, the specific uh, sales model that I use to sell on Amazon. And then I'm gonna run into what I think the reality of Amazon is and what it is to me. And then I'm gonna talk about what I actually think you should be doing. Um, what I think the future is, what I think you should be doing if you wanna be selling on Amazon. Just my honest opinion on all of them, okay? So um, what I would say is don't carry on looking at loads of other videos. As you can see, this, this isn't a highly edited video of me trying to sell something. This is just my genuine, honest opinion from 17 months, give or take me selling on Amazon. I've got a team working for me now. I've outsourced the majority of it. I earn a giddy, uh, I earn a goody, uh, a good income, you know, relative to in individual perspective on Amazon. So I think I do have the credentials, if you like, to actually go into detail and actually just explain my honest opinion of it, okay? So I think I titled this video, I tried Amazon for 17 months. I did, I have, and let's begin. Okay, so the first thing you gotta know is that I don't do private label, okay? I don't do private label. I do something called online arbitrage, okay? The majority of my business is online arbitrage. Now, some of you may be wondering, what is that? Now, that's where we look for products, okay? We look for products on uh, retail websites, okay? We look for products on retail websites, and me or my team now sources these products, okay? We purchase them, we then get, get them sent to a prep center, and the prep center sends them to the Amazon FBA fulfillment centers for us. So that's our business model, that's what we do. Um, this month, you know, last month, month before, I do about 20,000 pounds a month doing that business model, that's turnover, okay? So that just gives you a perspective, you know, I, I work about two hours a day on that business because I've outsourced the majority of it, okay? I wanna explain, um, now I've explained that, I now wanna explain, you know, how's it going? What is it? What what I think, you know, it looks like? What's the reality of it, okay? So, online arbitrage specifically, okay, is there's, there's potential to make money, okay? There's potential to make money, but I'll be completely honest, because no one was this honest with me when I started out. If you're gonna do what everyone else is doing, okay, and source similar products to what everyone else is doing, you're gonna struggle. Now you're gonna struggle with the ROI, okay? There's a few things you're gonna struggle with. The ROI is gonna be low, okay? For 85% of people, if you're not thinking outside the box, it's gonna be low, okay? You're gonna be at low margins, okay? Your ROI is gonna be probably sub 20%, okay? This is for vanilla OA, okay? Just general OA, okay? You need to know this stuff before you go in. Now you may better expand this knowledge into other areas like what I've done, okay? Um, so I'm, I'm more niched and I've got websites that are a bit more unknown. So I think that online arbitrage specifically, okay? Online arbitrage specifically is literally, it's, you can do sheer volume on it, but your margins are gonna be quite low. And that's, for a product business that isn't your own stuff, this is the same with most wholesale businesses, the margins are low anyway, so you've got to expect that. It's a similar sort of model to a wholesale, you know, it's just low margins. That's if you want to scale it, okay? So I think, online arbitrage specifically, the main thing that you should be focusing on is getting that business to a more unique level. What do I mean by that? Websites that not everyone's on. I mean, niching down to things that not everyone's on focusing on specific brands that not everyone else is on. As I just said, if you focus on what everyone else is doing, you're gonna get everyone else's results. And everyone else's results, for the majority, that aren't looking outside the box, it's low ROI. Now, if you're okay with that, then that's fine. But what you've got to understand is that if you're gonna take really low ROI, then there's not much space for problems and refunds and returns and issues with products. Um, they can eat into your profit margins quite a lot. Because you've got to remember, a lot of people think, oh, I can sell Amazon and I'll start being able to pay myself straight away, which is another point. No, if you've never run a product-based business before, you've got to understand that in order to make money, actually make money, okay, not be taking money prematurely out of your business, you need to be putting money back in to pay for 
all the discrepancy items, all the refunded items, all the items that have got issues, and pay for the stock that hasn't yet sold in Amazon. So this is what I didn't understand when I was starting out. It takes a while to get the business going in order for you to pay back original stock investment and to pay for the continued progressive discrepancies and refunds, etc., that are going to keep happening and will always be happening. This is why you can't extract all of the profit out, especially at the start, but generally, or some maybe forever or you know until you're you've you've paid off 90 percent of the business you need to be injecting that business that money back in so that's 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 a key thing there so that's online arbitrage in general okay it only works in my opinion at a smaller level unless you're going to scale it up i think it's only worth doing if you're if you've niched yourself down into a market that is not as competitive and you found stores that are less competitive if you do what everyone else is doing it's, it, you're probably going to be quite frustrated with all the price tankers, the penny pinches and everything like that, okay? The opportunity is there for either scaling it up if you want to do that or if you want to go a bit more niche. Other than that, I think you're going to be frustrated. I think you're going to be a bit bottlenecked and you probably won't enjoy it too much. It's my honest opinion. It's just my honest opinion, okay? That's my honest opinion on that. Retail arbitrage, I've dipped my toes into that. There's a lot more opportunity with retail arbitrage. I'm just running through a few of the models here. There's a lot more opportunity with retail arbitrage, okay, if you're willing to go out there and physically do stuff. Um, there's a lot of opportunity with RA, that's just the truth. Um, focusing more on higher priced RA stuff, seasonal stuff, all of this stuff, if you're willing to put the work in, there's a lot of opportunity there, okay? So that's OA, that's RA. I can't go too deep into RA because I, I don't do it in a deep way. but I, I don't really do it at all anymore. I don't do it at all. But I have done it. So that's my opinion on that. If you're willing to put in the work, but it is a lot of work, but if you're willing to put in the work, you can make a lot of money. Okay? Not to say it's easy, but you can make a lot of money. In my opinion, right, from, from someone that is ticking over nicely with an Amazon business, I paid myself what's considered more than a full-time salary, so I didn't pay myself, I reinvested it back into the business, but I could have paid myself what's considered a more, uh, more than a normal salary just from my Amazon business income. Last month, my online arbitrage income, it's still an opportunity, it's still an opportunity, and if you're willing to put in the work, it's still an opportunity, but you've, you've just got to understand what I just said, otherwise it's gonna be a struggle. A lot of people struggle. Um, a lot of people, you know, message me and say, oh, what, you know, what is this? You know, like, why, why can I not find anything? It's because you're doing things that everyone else is doing. You're on the same websites that everyone else is on. You're, you, you know, you're, you, maybe you haven't taken enough risk. You know, you're doing stuff that everyone else is doing. From, coming, coming from someone that runs and has run and is running a, an Amazon business and doing quite well from it, really, um, you know, couple of hours a day and I don't have to work down, you know, <laughs> full time anywhere for someone else. But, okay, it, it, it obviously comes with its challenges, right? So what I think, once again, this is my honest opinion, I think the future for me is to have this business, obviously continue to do this, this online arbitrage business as one of my incomes, but I would never personally fully rely on it. I'd never personally fully rely on it. You've got to understand that, okay? Why? Um, not only is there a risk of Amazon suspending you because you know the frequent fre frequency of you getting IP violations can happen, um, and they can suspend you for a, a, a another few reasons. But not only that, you never know how your sales are going to be necessarily um, for the month. Once you're not at a certain level, you know you 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 don't know if you're going to make as much profit as last month. So it is essential to trade your profits, right? But I wouldn't rely on it for that reason, okay? Um, it's 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 not the most stable of incomes, okay? It's just one of my incomes, but it's not the most stable. So I personally wouldn't fully rely on it, okay? What I think is the future, and as, as I say, I will have for this online arbitrage business for as long as it serves me, from what I can see at the moment. But coming from my experience, from what I've seen in my groups and YouTube, and obviously I know a lot of other sellers at the moment that are doing multiple different strategies of selling on Amazon, including private label. I think creating your own opportunities, whether that's private label, now not your generic private label, but some sort of private label, creating your own listing, some sort of opportunity that is your own opportunity that you've created, 
not hopping onto other people's listings, right? I think that's the future of Amazon. I think that's the future of Amazon, and I think that's the future of e-commerce. I think moving forwards, I'm pivoting right now. I'm pivoting right now from online advertising into more private label-ish sort of territory. I'll be launching my own brand soon that will be off Amazon as well. So it'll be its own website and then on Amazon. I know I need to cover that soon, but I will be doing that. The opportunity for a long-term stable income that I would actually trust as my full income, you know, and actually, you know, be, be comfortable enough to be paying off a mortgage on it, etc., raising a family on it, if that's what you need to do. I think you need that brand stability of your own brand. I think you need that. The, I think you need your own product range or you selling other products within your range under your own brand umbrella. You need that as a reliability so that you can actually build on that concrete base. The problem with online advertisers is that it's not a concrete base, okay? So I think you need a concrete base. Now, talking to private label, normal private label, you know, copying what everyone else is doing, that's dead, that's done, okay? And a lot of people think private label is dead, that's done. What's not done is more advanced private label. What's more, not, not done is creating loads of opportunities and being really creative with the way that you're thinking. Now, I can't go into too much detail here without giving away my specific idea that I'm going to be working on. But I think, to sum it up, the future, from what I've learned, is your own brand. Either off Amazon, on Amazon, off Amazon and on Amazon, or just on Amazon. Whatever you want to do, you've got to create your own brand so that you can get enough leverage to have the stability to have that income and build on that income to a good level. Other than that, it's 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 sort of, I would describe it as treading on eggshells if you're just going to do online arbitrage. You're treading on eggshells. But it creates me a nice income each month and it has taught me so, so much that I would never, I, I would never, you know, sort of slag it off because it's taught me a lot. It earns me a lot of money and it's great, you know, especially in Q4. I just, I, I wouldn't personally fully rely on that. I think you need to build a brand and then have that brand also selling on Amazon or just selling a brand on Amazon because you've also got the <clears throat> you've got the exit strategy potentially of selling a brand as well. That's what you haven't got with online advertising. You haven't got the exit strategy of being able to sell that brand, that 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 actual amount that that brand is worth that you've put your hard work and time and effort into, okay? So that's my opinion. That's my outtake, okay? So it can work, but it hasn't been an easy journey. I think the future is building your own brand. Um, and that's that's my opinion on it. Please like the video if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe if you've enjoyed it. And I will see you in the next. My name's Hayden Davison.